Hello, this is Eric D. Kirk for MamaWorld.com and welcome to the fifth part of our character animation tutorial series for After Effects. In the previous parts of our series, we focused on building a character rig for the woman with eye expressions. This time we focus on the wheels of the baby buggy. First, we ensure that the wheels rotate automatically when the rig is moving. Then, we make sure the highlights on the spokes appear and disappear naturally when the wheel rotates. All of this will be achieved with the following eye expressions. Rotating wheel linear motion from the physics bundle to make the wheel rotate automatically and rotation link from the linking bundle to link secondary animations to the rotation of the wheel. We start by hiding all layers in the timeline that don't belong to our baby buggy. Since we tagged the layers with Zorro in part 4 of our tutorial series, we can now simply go to the select mode of Zorro. Choose the baby buggy tag, then choose to isolate the tag in the timeline and click isolate. Now the timeline looks much cleaner since only the layers of the baby buggy are visible. The buggy consists of the main part of the buggy, two rods that connect the main part of the buggy with the wheels, the wheels, and some highlights on the wheels. Let's start with the wheels. We open the eye expressions library to find an expression to rotate our wheels. We type wheel in the search box and find three expressions. Cog wheels is not what we need, but rotating wheel linear motion and rotating wheel curvaceous motion looks promising. These two expressions are very similar. The main difference is that the linear motion variant computes much faster, but only works if your wheels move on a straight line. Since the ground on which our character moves is a flat line, we choose the rotating wheel linear motion. The most important parameter of this expression is the diameter of the wheel. For this, we need to measure the length from the left end of the wheel to the right end. We can do this by taking a look at the mouse cursor coordinates in the info panel. We go to the right end of the wheel and see that it is located at x615. The left end is at x541. Hence, the length between the two is 615 minus 541. If you are not a fan of mental arithmetic, you can use the pocket calculator that is built into all parameters of eye expressions. We just enter 615 minus 541 in the parameter and eye expressions automatically calculates the result, 74. Now we apply the expression to the wheel layer by selecting the layer and clicking apply. As you can see, the wheel now rotates automatically when it is moving. By default, the expression only rotates the wheel when the wheel layer itself is moving in the composition. But at the end of our test animation, instead of moving the character, and hence also the wheel, we moved our ground plane. Currently, the ground layer is not visible since we've hidden it with Zorro. So we click this icon to see all shy layers. Here we have our ground layer. As you can see, currently, the wheel is not moving accordingly when the ground plane moves. To fix this, we have to check the Use Ground Layer option of the expression and enter the name of the layer that represents our ground. Select our wheel layer again and reapply the updated expression to it. Now the wheel also rotates when the ground plane moves. Since we want to see the second wheel rotate in exactly the same way, we just select it and apply the same expression to it. Now let's take care of the highlights on the wheels. Currently, the wheel looks like the wheel shown on the left, but we want the highlights to behave as shown on the right. On the left, all highlights simply rotate with the wheel. On the right, only the highlights on the spokes rotate with the wheel, but the other highlights on the tire do not rotate. Also, whereas on the left, you have just one static highlight on the spokes, on the right, the highlights on each of the spokes appear and disappear dynamically in sync with the rotation of the wheel. First, we need to separate the highlights layers into two parts, one for the highlights on the spokes and one for the other highlights. We draw a rough mask around the spokes highlight and duplicate the layer. Then we call the first copy Wheel Highlight 1 and the other one Spokes Highlight 1. On the Wheel Highlight, we set the mask mode to Subtract. Now the layer Spokes Highlight 1 contains only the highlight on the spokes and the Wheel Highlight 1 layer contains the remaining highlights. Now the wheel highlight 1 should not be parented to the wheel anymore since it should not rotate with the wheel. However, of course, the highlight should still move when the baby buggy is moving. So we parent these highlights to the parent of the wheel which is the layer rod 1. 
Now the wheel highlight does not rotate anymore when we rotate the wheel, but it still moves with the buggy. Now the spokes highlight should appear and disappear in sync with the rotation of the wheel. For this we choose the expression rotation link in the iExpressions library in the linking category. This expression can play back any kind of keyframe animation in sync with a rotation property. We link the link rotation parameter to the rotation of the wheel 1 layer since this is the rotation that our highlight should react on. The parameters start frame and end frame describe the range in which keyframe should be considered. We keep them at the default values 0 and 360 and apply the expression to the opacity of the spokes highlight. This changes the meaning of keyframes on this property as follows. A keyframe at frame 0 does not mean that this keyframe should be actually used at frame 0 anymore. It means it should be used whenever the rotation of the link wheel is 0 degrees. And if you set a keyframe at 180, it means that this value should be used whenever the wheel has a rotation of 180 degrees. All keyframes behind the end frame 360 are ignored, since 360 degrees are one full rotation and the next rotation starts again with 0. We set keyframes at frame 0 and 360 with a value of 0 since the highlight should not be visible at the beginning of each rotation at all. Then at 30 we add a keyframe with 100% opacity and at 60 one with 0% again. This means between 0 and 30 degree rotation the highlight appears and between 30 and 60 degree rotation it disappears again. You can vary these times if you want the highlight to stay for a longer amount of time. You can also see that for later rotations the highlight appears again automatically. Now we want the highlight to be not only on one spoke but on all of them. Also note that the highlight is always on one side of the spoke and after half a rotation of the wheel another highlight must occur on the other side of it. So we need six copies of the highlight in total. We rename it to spokes highlight 1-1 and duplicate it five times. Then we adjust the rotation of all of them so that each spoke has exactly two highlights. One on the one side and one on the other. Now we will still have the problem that all highlights appear and disappear exactly at the same time. One way is to shift the keyframes on the opacity but since only the keyframes between frames 0 and 360 are considered by the expression this could get a bit complicated. Hence we use another trick and modify the expression itself instead. We go into the options of the linked parameter. Here we can specify an offset. The second copy of the highlights is rotated by 60 degrees. Hence for this layer the linked rotation of the wheel should always be increased by 60 degrees. So we enter an offset value of 60 and apply this modified expression only to the opacity of this second copy. The third copy has a rotation of 128 degrees, hence we enter this now as an offset and only apply it to the opacity of this layer. We continue with all other layers like this. Now the highlights nicely appear and disappear on all spokes. If you want the highlights to stay on longer or shorter, you can still adjust that by easily adjusting the position of the keyframes. Of course in the same way you can also create the highlights on the second wheel but we will skip this here. Here we are at the end of this tutorial. You have learned how to create rotating wheels with eye expressions and that you can even link secondary animations like animated highlights to the rotation of the wheel. In the next part we are going to finish our baby buggy rig. In particular we make the baby buggy wiggle when it starts moving and the baby won't even wake up. Again, this is Eric D. Kirk for MamaWorld.com, and we'll see you next time.